All right, on today's video, we are going to finish up our two USS Voyager builds, and all that is left is the decals. So let's take a look at the decal sheet for this model. Now, this is absolutely an intense set of decals. Um, obviously, on the Voyager, you have a ton of lifeboats. Now, even on these lifeboats, these decals are really specific. So if you have a single lifeboat all by itself, it gets kind of four corners of red markings all the way around it. If you're doing two together, you have to use lifeboats where the one on the left has the red corners on the left, the one on the right has red corners on the right. Uh, so you really kind of have to pay attention even on the lifeboats uh, to make sure you're using the right set to make it look right. Uh, you get tons of kind of warning stripes to go around the phasers, both around the ends and then across. Absolutely tons of little hatches all over the ship. Now, honestly, I'm not going to put all these in. Really, I, I get diminishing returns, especially when I get down to these tiny little dots. You know, these tiny little dots... I just don't find it fun to put those on. So I'm going to put a ton of the markings on like this. I'm going to go for tons of the little hatches over here. Tons of these little things. Um, I'll do a handful of these, but I'm not going to do these little dots. Now, as we're talking about the decals, uh, we can talk about one issue that this kit has. And this is not a big deal, but it is something that detracts from the kit a little bit. And that's because of the way they press the kit and they press down to mold the saucer. They're missing some of the details that you would have to press in from the side. Now, the engineering hull, since they did this piece kind of in three pieces, they do have some of the detail that they were able to press in from the side. Specifically, the bigger windows and the sensor arrays. This is a sensor array right here. And you can see it is molded in. On the top of the saucer, you can see um, there's no detail pressed into the side. So you just have a blank face. And here on the sensor arrays, you don't have any detail at all. All of those are done by decals on the top of the saucer. So here's what things look like with the decals. Uh, so you have decals for the windows. And then here are the sensor arrays. Uh, really nice decals with a lot of good detail, uh, but because they're done as a decal instead of being painted, uh, they're not really going to match what you have done on the other sensor arrays. All right, after decaling up the ship, these are the decals I have left. Like I said, I don't find the little dots and the hash marks to be fun, so I didn't do those. Um, I didn't do some of these warning stripes, and I'll show you where those go that I didn't put them, but I didn't do some of those. I didn't find a place for these last two uh, phaser warning strips, so maybe they just gave you extras, or maybe I missed where those go. Um, and then you get your choice of either white windows or black windows, so I have the white windows left over as well. Also looks like I had a spare little decal 12, and a few other little markings that were extra. I really did have fun doing all these decals. And as I did them, I realized there are a ton of little decals on here that make it match the studio model. And as I looked at pictures of the studio model, I could see where the little decals I was putting on match what was on the studio model. So let's look at the studio model, some of the pictures from, I believe, a magazine that was put out when Voyager came out, and the decals that you actually put on on this model kit. All right, so if we look first at this area under the saucer, where this is the captain's yacht, uh, you'll see that all of those little markings from this hatch to all these little warning stripes, and even the registry and name uh, for this captain's yacht, or I think it's the arrow wing or arrow shuttle. Um, all of those little markings are fully represented on the decal sheet. Next up, as you kind of look at the bridge, you can see these decals, all these little markings back here. All of these, once again, really do match up with um, the studio model. And it's always kind of fun uh, to see these little decals on your model that are on the studio model. 
All right, going down kind of the back, you've got these warning rectangles here. You've got the hatch on the back of the bridge section. You've got all of these markings around the sensor array, even this little one right here and another hatch. On the torpedo launchers, you get those kind of rectangular decals right there. All right, you get a little airlock hatch for this airlock. A little markings. Here's all the markings around the sensor array on front, including these little dots that go on top of the deflector dish. That's a pretty nice decal as well. Of course, the little warning arches around the phaser strips. And I know I said I didn't do any dots, but I definitely did uh, these little triangles that go around the deflector dish and these markings. Uh, these triangles may be small, but I do think they are very important part of what the deflector dish looks like, so I had to do those. Now, those extra warning decals uh, that I did not put on, the kind of red lines, those are supposed to go right here on this hinge, and I didn't put that on because I really didn't want, I was a little worried that they might get caught in the hinge, uh, so I left those off. And after all those decals, the models are done. Now, these are review copies, so I feel a certain amount of pressure to do them in a quick time frame so people can see what these model kits are about before they hit the shelves. Uh, as I did the decals on these, I realized I could have spent another couple weeks working on these models. They are just so fun. And as I worked on these, there's so much more you can do. And these look great, they've got a ton of detail, but there's so much more you can do with shading these panels, doing different colored panels. All of these little raised dots here, uh, those should be painted white. Uh, there's some painting to be done on this detail. Uh, there's some painting to be done on these bridge accents. Um, you can really deck out these sensor pads. Uh, you can do those same sorts of colors down there. Down on the bottom of the saucer, lots of painting for these details. Uh, on this one, I did do a, a panel line wash around the shuttle to kind of accent that. But all of these little areas here, all of those can be painted. Uh, there's little navigation light details uh, that you could put a little bit of color on. And there is an opportunity to do a little bit of finishing work on here that I didn't really get to do on these builds. Now, the saucers match up very, very well, uh, but if you have the time, uh, a little bit of putty to finish up this edge uh, so you don't really see a gap or a crack right there, I kind of would recommend, you know, put those hobby skills to use, putty that up, sand it, and make this part of it look as good as this. All right, now that we have these ships built, let's get a good look at them. Here's a good look at those landing legs that are optional uh, on either edition, the standard or the clear edition. You can put those into the, your build so you can make your ship in a landed position. And let's get a look at that little mechanism. 
removing the pylons and it really does snap into place if you do it right to hold it in exactly the right position and as you saw in the last video you can even do it lit up and run those wires through and still have your moving hinges All right, now let's do a few size comparisons, get an idea of how these would look on your shelf. And here is Kirk's Enterprise with the USS Voyager. So roughly the same length, Voyager has it by about an inch or so, uh, but the Voyager, much more massive, much more room inside to install lights. But both of those will pair nicely on a shelf. Our hero ship from Deep Space Nine along with the Voyager. Now what really makes these two match up well is that same color palette of gray blues and gray. They're not just pristine white ships like the Enterprise and the Excelsior. Both very fun builds and both these were very easy to light. Now I find this to be one of the most interesting comparisons. Uh, because I have always thought the Excelsior just being massive, and I expected the Excelsior to dwarf Voyager. But really, if you didn't have those hugely long nacelles, the Voyager seems like it has as much volume and mass as Excelsior. We're really not that far off in volume between these two ships. Now the other ship I really want to show Voyager next to is the Enterprise E, my absolute favorite ship. Now these two models are not in scale. The Enterprise E is 1 hundredth, the Voyager is 1 1,000th. Uh, so if these two were in scale, uh, the Enterprise E would probably be a third longer, so it would also dwarf Voyager. But I love both these ships together because they both uh, were kind of two teams working on the next generation Starship after the Enterprise from the next generation. And they both had some real similar ideas, kind of doing the saucer long instead of wide like the Enterprise D. Uh, they both removed the neck and made a real nice smooth transition from the top of the saucer to the engineering hall. So very, very similar ships. Uh, they did a lot of the same ideas, um, except one decided the future was small, compact, efficient nacelles, and the other production team decided massive, long, elegant nacelles. So I really do just love these two side by side because it shows kind of how two different teams of people uh, get the same starting point and some of the same ideas and come up with completely different realizations of that. All right, so there we have my two completed builds of USS Voyager from Star Trek Voyager. Uh, these model kits are coming out this summer, so look for them in your hobby stores. Uh, but they are very fun builds, uh, very easy to light, lots of room to work, and the clear edition is just frustration free when it comes to dealing with those windows. No drilling things out. Uh, you don't have to do a ton of masking. Really, you simply uh, scrape away the paint um, after your light blocking phase to let the light shine through those windows. And you really do get a really nice result uh, doing it that way. And this really is a very nice size. This is a size where it'll fit on a bookshelf well, look good with your other models, but it's still big enough that you can do some really cool things with it. And I'm really excited to see what people do with this model as far as painting and weathering and detailing it above and beyond kind of these out of the box builds that I just did. So that's our review. I think it's a great model. Um, I think that there's a big opportunity here for people to do additional things, kind of make improvements to those sensor arrays, make improvements to the windows, really do some nice finish jobs on these. 
So of course, a big thank you to Round 2 and Polar Lights for sending us these review copies. And a big thank you to all of you following the channel and following our builds. We'll be back soon.